Greetings, everyone, and welcome back to The Layout, the Union Pacific Railroad Evanston subdivision in HO scale. My name is Daryl Cruz, owner and builder of The Layout, and your host for episode 35 of season 2024. Well, I finally did it. I started Devil Slide. I've been worried about this and been nervous about starting this, not sure exactly how to do it, but I finally took the lunge and began working on this pretty crucial aspect of the layout. Make sure, if you haven't yet, to subscribe and uh, like this video. Comments are also a great thing as well. Well, this is kind of how things looked and have looked for a while, just some Hardboard there sitting waiting for uh, Some scenery and this is the location for a devil slide geographic or geological uh, Formation uh, Here's a picture of what we're talking about. This is an unusual rock formation Along the Evanston sub they in fact have a visiting lane on the interstate on both sides of the interstate and I definitely needed to include this as part of the layout because this is the Evanston sub. Now I had planned on going uh, building it off the layout and then lowering it into position because there's no way I could reach it from the front of the layout. Uh, and then after thinking about it and looking at things I thought well maybe I could squeeze myself into the back here. And uh, sure enough, there was enough room for me to stand up there in the back. Uh, and I can kind of reach everything, especially if I got on a step stool or a, uh, some way to get myself up a little bit so I could lean over the layout. Now it was a very uh, tight squeeze, only about 12 inches between the wall and the uh, bench work. Uh, so I'm in there, but uh, my belly is pressing hard against that uh, piece of bench work. And it was going to be possible, but it wasn't going to be very comfortable. Uh, so I was kind of looking around and trying to figure out uh, how I can do this. And I uh, wasn't sure I was going to be able to get myself in and out. Because even as well as I might plan and have everything in hand, I knew... There was going to be times for me to go back and forth and back and forth to get stuff. And uh, I knew it was going to be kind of an ordeal. So I was able to get back there. But I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to. Here you see me trying to squeeze back down. wasn't sure it was going to be feasible yet. So something had to be done. Uh, first of all, I needed to get all the stuff I was storing under the layout there. Out from under the layout. And so I had a bunch of boxes that held the boxes of all the equipment. This isn't all of it. But instead of just moving it, I decided to put it on shelves. I'm going to get all of my boxes and put them all on shelves like this under the layout. Uh, that's planning for the future when we need to sell everything. Um, more on that later. Uh, here's the view from behind the layout. I do have an egress window here. And I do have room to climb out of here it does require crawling under the layout but once you are uh, to the window you can stand up and then should be able to get out now here's the corner where I need to get and as you can see I think it's like 12 inches maybe even a little less between the wall and that piece of uh, bench work there but I was looking at it and I was thinking you know, why can't I just cut that piece out there in the corner and I noticed I did have that one L girder there sitting there that needed to be supported I couldn't just simply cut it off without making some allowances for that here's a view from underneath there's that one L the right right there there's that one L girder that still needed to be supported and that's the piece I needed to cut out of there once I got that once I get that cut out of there I could work a little bit more freely now here I did just put a leg there. If you see that white piece of one by twos, I put two of them together. There's some screws there ready to cut me up. Um, so I did remove it, and then I'm just standing there now, and I can reach 
without a step stool and without any additional help. Now I noticed this was loose too, by the way. I did screw that in a little bit more uh, solidly, but I did find that I could get back there and this made it, with that piece of wood gone, I had probably more like 18 inches, uh, which was uh, much more easy for me to move back and forth and get in and out. One thing I noticed being back here is kind of gave an interesting view of the layout. Sometimes it's always interesting to see what it looks like from a direction that you don't normally look. Uh, so you can see the Tagger Mountain there and the bridges and everything and my sofa and a little table that we use for the crew when they're not running trains. So I went ahead and began working on Devil's Slide. One of the first things I did was I put a, some another piece of hardboard back there because I knew the mountain had to go higher than the uh, hardboard that was there uh, you know, existing. And I also, if you see, I had some clamps there. I, p I clamped a piece of plywood uh, under the interstate because I didn't want the scenery to come right up to the interstate. On the prototype, there's actually a river. You have the interstate and then you have the Weber River and then the uh, Devil's Slide uh, rock formation. So I didn't want it to come right up to uh, the layout, but I didn't really have room to actually put the full width of the river. But I think just the fact that the Devil's Slide is not touching the interstate will help the visual impact. Now, I did put together a backdrop. These are some pictures that I took of the, in the Devil's Slide area with my drone while I was out there a couple weeks ago. And I have to say, once I got this uh, backdrop in there, it, it made everything look really, really good. Definitely made a big, big difference. In fact, I was thinking, you know, maybe the easy way to go was just simply put Devil Slide on a backdrop and just have a picture of it. I also included a Taggart's restaurant. My wife and I had a... Uh, lunch there once. That's right by the Taggart Tunnels. There's a restaurant there, a real nice restaurant. It has some peacocks there, but my, my wife really enjoyed that, so she insisted that I include that on the layout, and so I did. There's a picture there, and I incorporated a, a, a little parking lot along with it, and I'll put some more details on as we go through. So here's kind of how it looked, and again, uh, you know, this definitely makes a big impact just having that there um, but I wanted to have rather than just a picture that would be the easy way to go um, but rather than just have a picture I actually wanted uh, a model of the devil slide so I decided I was going to go ahead and attempt that and uh, you can see I went ahead and drew some lines with a marker on there to kind of give myself an idea of where I want this mountain to go. Now much of the backdrop's covered up. And uh, usually I do the scenery first and then insert the backdrop into behind the scenery, but I knew I was not going to be able to do that, which is the way things were. So I decided to go ahead and put the backdrop in. Here's a piece of plywood I put under there. I thought I would put that plywood in there to actually be the river, but there's just not enough room. The, plywood only provides like an inch of separation between the uh, interstate and the um, the scenery. Now I put some trees in here to kind of help hide some of the division points between the backdrops and then I also put a little parking lot here uh, to kind of match up with the parking lot in the picture. I put a car there so that's going to Looks like the road goes off behind the hill there. So that's going to be pretty cool. They do have peacocks there. So I'm going to see if I can find models of some peacocks someplace. Not sure if anybody makes that. And then uh, the next thing was to go ahead and, you know, go back there and start uh, putting in a cardboard web. So I was making progress. I really felt good that things were moving along. This is the hardest part of the layout so far. Now, the hardest part to figure out exactly how to do things and then also just physically 
kind of the hardest part because of crawling underneath the layout back and forth um, and then reaching for different areas and so on. All right, now, so here I am back behind the layout. You can kind of see the view from here. I'm standing on my two-step step stool. So I'm about 20 inches off the ground. There's a where I cut the wood. That was a huge improvement. And I can reach pretty much everything from here. There again, you can see the plywood. Now it does kind of give three inches of separation, but I figured out that I was not, I was gonna have to put the cardboard webbing on that plywood, not underneath it. It would have just been too steep of an incline if I put it underneath it. It kind of ripped this here a little bit, but it's high enough that it's not really visible. And uh, so the cardboard webbing is in. It looks pretty good from this standpoint. Here you can see, by the way, I do have the layout on this wall away from the wall. So I am able to get back behind it if I absolutely need to. All right, here's what it looked like from the outside. And I was really happy with the way this looked. I'm glad I didn't make the incline too steep. And uh, then I have, if you notice, I have a couple of pieces of plywood that I've cut. I studied the pictures as closely as possible, and I kind of cut the the plywood in the in the shape of the two different pieces of this rock formation from photos. Now I'm going to eventually uh, put some uh, rock molds on there. I'm also going to put some. Uh, interstate highway signs to block the view of the devil slide in the mirror so you can see in the mirror a reflection of devil slide so I'm gonna have to do some things here to kind of uh, make this mirror thing uh, disappear I'm gonna put a tree there in that division point between and then I'm gonna put these highway signs I'm gonna put one highway sign here uh, so that's going to uh, block some, of the, and then back there also. So I'm going to have two highway signs that are going to hopefully, when you're standing at the layout, will block the view of the uh, the devil slide. So it won't look like there's two devil slide on the layout. I have a seam here also, but I'm going to need to put a tree right there to, to hide that yet. Um, but this is as far as I've gotten. Oh, I also put the paper on there as well, as you can see on this one. I forgot about the paper. So the next things I'm going to do is uh, put some plaster, um, use some plaster gauze to put a layer of plaster on there. Uh, put uh, a little, paint some uh, plaster on top of the plaster gauze to make it a little bit thicker. I'm going to put rock molds on to that those two pieces of plywood. I'm hoping it's not going to make it too thick. If I put a, a rock mold on each side, um, that's going to be making too thick. So I'm trying to do like a thin, thin rock mold on the inside and maybe something thicker on the outside. Uh, we'll just have to kind of wait and see. There again, you can see the fact that you can see a reflection. Uh, but this whole area is really, I think, turning out very nice. I'm very happy with it. Been working on this for a long time. Definitely one of the more complex and difficult areas of the layout. I'm going to be super glad that it's all all done but it's definitely coming together I think this is going to be a very effective um, representation of Devil Slide and if people have ever driven through the canyon this was part of the Weber River Canyon if anybody's ever been through this area I think it should jump right out at you that this is uh, a model of a devil slide. Uh, once I get this part here done, I'm going to then move on 
And I'm going to do this section here. We got Granger on top and then the Devil Slide control point, a wholesome cement. Uh, so this is kind of down the line for the little bit in, hopefully in a couple weeks. I'm gonna put a uh, automatic crossing here. That's gonna be pretty cool. This is gonna be Granger. And my work here for the first pass on the basic scenery, which is what I've been doing all the way through, is basically just, you know, painting the plywood, putting down ground foam and some vegetation, uh, ballasting the track, putting up some buildings and so forth. And then hit, once I get that top done, then I'll work here. This is wholesome cement. So I'll uh, put in this basic scenery in here as well. There's gonna be a couple more through truss bridges here. Uh, this is what it looks like from my drone the view of this area here with the Weber River and the through truss bridges and the road going under and over the river and under the railroad and so forth. So that's all going to go in this area here. Should be pretty cool. Looking forward to seeing how that's going to turn out. This is the Devil Slide control point. There's a switcher there. I'm going to add one more turnout to have kind of a drill track there. Yeah, before I start the scenery. So this is the next area. I'm really looking forward to moving on. I've been working on this uh, Taggart Mountain Devil Slide area for probably a eight weeks or so, maybe six. Uh, definitely it's been a lot of work and effort, but I think it's time well spent. I think it's turning out pretty good. So we see some trains running through. want to uh, thank all of our members once again uh, who support this uh, channel. Really appreciate it. have uh, three new members. Actually, one just changed or upgraded their position, and then two new members. So welcome to them. And uh, one thing I... Uh, members can see the video usually on Saturday or early Sunday. I let uh, It's made available to members first, and then usually to everybody else sometime Sunday afternoon or Sunday evening. Well, that's it for this week. Thanks so much, everyone, for watching. Stay tuned to the continued progress on the Union Pacific Railroad Evanston Subdivision. Take care, everybody.